Now, oh, wait a minute, honey. Hold it a second. That's not going to work out. Thursday night's the only night I'm able to get to the library, and I've got... All right, you give me your poli sign notes on Friday, and I'll type them up on Saturday. That'll save you having to rewrite them on Sunday, and we'll go to the deluxe then, okay? Okay, it'd be nice to see a movie for a change. Good, then it's all settled. Yeah, good. <laughs> Bye. Oh, wait a minute, honey. I'm not going to have those notes done until real late on Friday. What if I give them to you on Saturday around noon? Oh, honey. Uh-oh. Look, I promised Mother I'd go shopping with her Saturday, and I, I, I have to get my hair done. Well, I don't mean you have to come by the station. Howie can drop by your place. Just leave him in the mailbox. Well, I thought you said on Saturday Howie has to go to the dinner. Goodbye. But... Hey, I thought you wanted to lift down the boat. Not if I have to listen to a two-man reading of the Macaulay, Topeka, and Santa Fe time schedule. Look, George Orwell didn't predict this kind of robot madness for another 20 years. Quit jumping the gun, will you? Okay, free spirit. Remember to get back to the boat. It's your turn to fix chow tonight. Yeah, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Well, Tom, no, you can't stand the thought of any sort of organization. If we hurry up, we can get a cup of coffee at the windmill. I gotta relieve Mr. Stout at 3 o'clock because Mr. Stout's got an appointment. Oh, darn it! I forgot to pick up the papers. I'm grading for Professor Collins. Well, he has to have them for his 8 o'clock, so I'll be back. Well, take your time. I'll do no such thing. I'm not going to miss out on that cup of coffee. I'll meet you at the Jeep. Hey, Wes, come on in. I don't have time, Willis. All right. Ready down. Sit. Get in, get in, get in. Hey, Macaulay, heads up. Come on. Son of a gun, you're looking great, sir. Why, you old steamroller. <laughs> well, back in high school, I could hand this guy a shovel pass. He'd be good for five yards any time. Yeah, but that was centuries ago, Will. Ah, uh, cut it out. Come on, you're on our side. Come on. Oh, Come on, you guys. Hey, wait a minute. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's get him. Ready down. Set. Set one. Set two. Set three. <laughs>
Then you better make a note. I don't want anyone on the field without the practice uniforms. It's short of hip pads, use some of the new. How am I supposed to start spring training tomorrow with nothing but Charlie horses and broken collarbones? Give my right arm to get that Macaulay on the team. I thought you told me you were in a hurry. Hi, Professor Cullen. What's that expression you fellows had in the service about always having to rush everywhere just so you could stand in line and wait? Now, where did you ever hear that? Well, from an honorably discharged soldier, somewhere in the middle of that dog pile. That's the one I was rushing around to wait for. Good night, Irene. <laughs> oh, no. What's wrong? I had intended to say goodbye, and it came out sounding like a song title. Remember the song? I certainly do. You know, before that came out, nobody ever made fun of my name. But ever since the third grade, uh, third I could... Third grade? You were in the third grade when I was finishing up my junior year of college? Really? Thank you, Miss Hoff. Thank you very much. You know, when I left my office, I felt about as young and vital as any fellow on this campus. Now, a few minutes later, I end up feeling like your father. <laughs> I didn't mean No, to... no, you did the right thing. You have to watch old bachelor school teachers around this time of year, or we're liable to get out of hand. Uh, I'll have these papers in your office before you're 8 o'clock. Fine. Have I ever told you how really grateful I am for all of your help? But I'm the one who's grateful. That extra money comes in awfully handy. Uh, <laughs> and, well, grading exam papers is an excellent experience if I'm going to be a teacher. Well, I enjoy it. That's what I wanted to hear. Well, good night, Irene. Just a minute. I don't like that look in your eye. <laughs> Besides, we went all through this last year, you know. Come on, Macaulay. What's wrong with you? Where's your old school spirit? Get off it, Tucker. Quit pussyfooting, Macaulay. You know you're dying to be out there with us this year. Spring practice starts tomorrow. How about it? Come on. Same old story. Not enough time. Of course, if I uh, lived at home with my folks and got a big, fat allowance... Big, fat allowance? Huh. You ought to see the work I got to do for that. I got to go down to the school. I got to work here. I got to go there. Hold I it, Tucker. Crack. Why don't you drop around my office tomorrow? Maybe we can work something out. I'm sorry, sir. I don't think it'll do any good. Not unless you could figure out some way how to invent a 30-hour day. You still eligible, Tucker? Uh, you worry about yourself. You got to watch this guy, Coach, real close, or he'll turn right into a little butterball on you. So long. See you later. Is he still working down at the Stotts gas station? Yeah. I, uh, yes, sir, Coach. I think he is. What are you doing, Tucker? How do you expect to lose any of that blubber just standing around? Uh, Go yes, on, sir. get busy on those rollers. Let's yes, get sir. that practice field in some kind of shape. Get the lid out. Okay, okay. Break it up. Break it up. You guys got so much steam and vinegar in you, I know just the place to get rid of it. Put McCauley's name down on that list. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Uh, 
rock my boat around the corner, will you? <coughs> Better see you made it back. What's for chow? Spaghetti without meatballs. Again. Well, uh, count me out. I'll ring spring and dinner down at the station tonight. Very romantic. Dinner for two beneath the shade of a sheltering lubrac. A can of oil, a jug of gas, and thou beside me, licking gift stamps. What's she bringing? Fried chicken. Now, don't get any ideas to it. As you say, it's strictly dinner for two. Well, you know where to throw the bones. Shadrach and I are getting pretty tired of my spaghetti, your boiled potatoes, and burned greens and corn tone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Wes! Wes! Guess who's up at the station? Coach Bergstrom. Boy, he sure is a great guy. Mr. Slot for him to a free hooker, and he wants to talk to you and everything. Isn't that great? Well, just take it easy, Howie. I've already talked to him, so relax. Well, he sure is a nice guy. He shook my hand. His hands are about that thick, and he's got shoulders on him like this. Steuben, that was his name. Bobby Steuben. You mean Bobby Carnes of Steubenville. Uh, well, you know who I mean. The little short quarterback that saved your neck back in 51. 53. Well, what difference does it make? I told you I don't know anything about football. Hey, Coach, remember last year when Cordella College was playing Muskingum College and in the second half, this great big hairy football... Of course he remembers. Now, Howie, stop bothering the coach. Go in the office and get a fistful of gift stamps. Now, go on, hurry up. I'll get your windshield, Mr. Bergstrom. I could say I just happened to be in the neighborhood and decided I needed some gas, but... But you still got that gleam in your eye, Coach. I guess I'm still remembering how good you looked in that scrimmage today. Yeah? Well, that scrimmage just about cost me my girl. Here are your stamps, Coach. Over at school, Coach Belknap was telling us about... I know you got a tough schedule, Wes, but the scholarship should make it a lot more flexible. And scholarship? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Scholarship? Hmm. Wow, I'm gonna go get burned. Well, I didn't know... Well, last year they didn't have any. Well, I've been giving the alumni board a hard time for years. I guess they finally got tired of having their arms twisted, so they... Offered a few partial scholarships. I submitted your name for one of them. <laughs> a scholarship? No kidding. Well, fill me in. Well, Bergstrom, it's about time you fellows over there got off your duff and give Wes something he deserves. Of course, I'm not saying that Wes is anything special, but he's a darn sight better than anyone you've had on that team since that big dumb what's-his-name was drafted. Hey, Vic! Heads up! I'll show you who's slowing down, you poor excuse for a halfback. Hey, I'm on the opening, going all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bert. Yeah. Hey, hey, Vic. Boy, it's good to see you. Say, I saw some of the other fellas the other day. And oh, by Dad Benson, remember him? This high school coach Cordell ever had. Hey, Vic, remember when we were playing New Matamoras? Hey, Mr. Dobson. Place in the world to talk, is it? Wanna go in the office? Oh, no, no. Hey! Hey, Verge! You scatter those cabbage leaves all over the station and you'll clean them up yourself, Verge! I don't come over there dripping oil all over your market. Of course, along with that acceptance, they sent a not so gentle reminder about scholarship athletes maintaining a B grade average. Well, I'm not saying I'm Phi Beta Cap or anything like that, but <laughs> well, I've been able to squeeze out a B average so far. Don't have to worry about Wes, Bergstrom. Fine, Wes. As long as you remember that you're no good to me unless you keep those grades up, fine. Well, if he didn't have sense enough to pound the nail in a snowbank, you don't think I'd have him working for me, do you? We've got a lot of good material in the squad out there this season, and with you out there as fullback. Hmm. I know the boys turn out for football for a lot of different reasons. But if I'm in a judge at all, you play because you like the game. I think you'll be good for the team. And I know the game will be good for you. End of speech, okay? One, two, three, four, hey, 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 hey. Hey, Green, Wes got a scholarship, isn't that great? Hey, ever since Wes was knee-high to a tall engine, I knew he was a born fullback. Boy, Howdy, this is something to write home about, I'll tell you. And the thing is, if you make a name for yourself in football, it's bound to help you in business, no matter what field you go into, especially in a town like this. It'll be all right if I let you know tomorrow. 
sort of like. Once you make a name for yourself in any sport, it, it'll open uh, doors for you all over town, uh, like uh, a team. Irene Hoff, this is and uh, remember Coach Stu Brooks Keller? This is, uh, two year Letterman go to Ohio State. Look what he's done to him. He's 34 years old and general. Honey, nothing's been decided yet. It's only a partial scholarship, and I still have to work. Partial not, an opportunity like this doesn't come by every day, and when it does, you got to grab it. Just like the grocery business. You know, there was a fellow come into the store that... Excuse me, Mr. Dawson. Honey, I'm very happy for you, really. But uh, with your work and your school, and you have that little time as it is. Hold it. Hold it. If you want anything bad enough, you can find the time. Ain't that right, Coach? Yeah, That's I'm gonna right. go call Denny Tucker. He's always blasting off about his big brother. Oh, Willis doesn't even have a scholarship. What do you think, honey? Well, shut. She thinks it's the greatest thing that happened to her since her mother and pappy let her wear nylon. Shoot, yeah, the greatest darn thing since Seedless Grapes. <laughs> Well, I've always wanted to know what it would be like to be the girl of a famous football player. Hey, you gotta be a football hero to get along with a beautiful girl. Can you imagine? You gotta be a Ready, set. Hold it, hold it. McCauley. Okay, man, let's get some pep in this one. Come on. Ready, set, shift. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on. Hey, Irene. Irene. Hi, stranger. Hi. How come you're not over watching West practice? Well, I was over there yesterday. Oh, I didn't see you. Well, maybe you left before I got there. Or maybe that was the day before yesterday. Yeah, yeah well, Richie and I are going over there just as soon as we deliver papers. I'll see you. Hey, hey, uh, how's your algebra and your Latin coming? Oh, fine. Of course, now that Wes is so busy, he doesn't have too much time to help me, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> well, I don't have anything to do with if I can do anything to oh, help. Oh, no thanks. I mean, I'm not flunking or anything. Thanks anyway. I'll see you later. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, maybe I'll just have to take up knitting. Your shoelace? Ah, come on, Macaulay. We're not grandstanding freshmen. Why be so gung ho about it? Gee, I thought we were playing football, honest. Why didn't you guys tell me we were playing hopscotch? Okay, Wes. If that's the way you want it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Except for one thing, if there'd been a team out there against you, any team, the play would have collapsed like a dime store accordion. Holy, where were you when Macaulay needed you? You were among the missing. Mossman, come here. You're down, waiting for the ball to be snapped. Now, the whole play depends on sucking the linebacker out of position. Now, when the ball is... You see, Mossman, you have to turn your man out. How do you expect to sucker the linebacker out of position if you don't open that hole? Tucker, you were supposed to be out ahead of Macaulay. What happened? 
I tripped. <laughs> Fellas, whoever's tripping Tucker, will you cut it out? <laughs> I'm not sure that any of you know what you're doing. Except Macaulay, and most of the time he's so far ahead of his blockers, he's playing his own private game. The only reason I've got him out here is to shake you guys up. Who knows? Even Tucker may show some signs of life. <laughs> It's a team game, men. Now, we've been running the same play for three days. And if we have to, we'll run it for three more. Now, come on, you guys. Let's get with it. Give you a lift? Oh, no thanks. I just saw you standing here waiting for the bus. And then I realized the bus doesn't run on 2nd Street. <laughs> well, I was trying to make up my mind about something. Well, you picked a picturesque spot. The standing under a sturdy mulberry tree on a warm spring afternoon help you reach better decisions sooner? You know, put that in the form of a statement, you'd have a very interesting subject for your thesis when you go for your PhD. Maybe. Of course, it sounds loaded with complexities, and I need an intelligent, healthy, uncomplicated assistant to help me with my research. <laughs> uh, I was trying to decide about some yarn for a sweater, and, well, I guess the mulberry tree helps. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Davis, she has the best selection of yarns in town. I'm going to have a carload of exams to go through next week. Uh, well, I I'm going to be pretty busy myself. Oh. Well, if I find the time, I'll be very glad to help you out. Well. Look, uh, since you've already made up your mind about the yarn... Yes, I have. Well, it'll probably just take you a couple of minutes then to make your purchase. I'll wait for you. Oh, oh, Mrs. Davis is quite a talker. I don't mind waiting. No, thanks. I'd like to take you home, or wherever you're going. <laughs> I never ride when I can walk. Now, that's what good mother hoffs tell their little girl hoffs to say to strangers who offer rides. Well, I'm going to be 21 in June, Professor. And I'm not a stranger. Bye-bye. Uh, I'll wait. Hey! Not bad, not bad. Keep it in there now, hit it! A little better, a little better. Hunter, come on! Hey! Drive! Let's go! You look like a bunch of ballet dancers. Get under you, man, and drive! to admit it, but the coach was right. I've really had to work to keep up with you, Macaulay. You know something else? I've never felt better in my life doing it. Okay, that's it. And don't try to talk me into more practice today. Hit the showers! Put the dummies away gently. We may just need them again tomorrow. Tucker? Not bad, not bad. Hear that, Tiger? How's it going? <laughs> It's a secret, but I'm pretty beat. Yeah, I can see that, but uh, a couple more weeks you'll be in fair shape. I mean, how are the grades going? Oh, all right, I guess. I got midterms in a couple of days. I'm not too worried. If I can just find time to study. I'll make it. I got to set a good example for Tucker, right? Right. Take that in the 
shower with you. You drive up. He's sleeping. No, I'm just resting my eyes. Well, I got all my assignments done and finished all the work for Professor Crawley, so. Well, you mentioned earlier that you'd have some typing for me. No, I just uh, got these stupid facts and formulas. Oh, then maybe I can help. Look, they're not going to do any good rattling around on your head. I just have to cram them into mine. Thanks. to the high heaven of gasoline and burnt rubber. I know I gripe about it a lot, but... I touch, I inevitably end up with a, a spot somewhere on my clothes. And always having to literally beg that key from dear Mr. Stott every time I want to powder my nose. I just got it cleaned up in there, Irene. Can't you go over to the Dobsons? No, I'll hug. Honey. Look, Irene, I'd like to talk, but I've got all these stupid things to read. And... Do you need some more coffee? No, that's probably what's wrong with me. I'm up to my ears in coffee. I don't need anything. You know, I haven't had dinner. <laughs> well, I thought I'd go to the windmill. Can I bring you back a hamburger or something? No, thanks. Shut up. Unless you want chili. <laughs> no, no thanks. Um, a cup of hot chocolate will be fine. Okay. It just seems so funny taking one order from you and... Well, gee, I hardly ever see Wes anymore. He is terribly busy. Playing football, you mean? Yes. Yeah. But so what? Sam had Tucker over there who's been playing football for ages. And it doesn't keep him from coming in here every night of his life. Uh, uh, t uh here. Jerry, want to put some whipped cream on the hot chocolate? Yeah, sure. Let's have a little skid more. Take off those sunglasses. 
one glass that I recognize anywhere. What's the cha-cha champion of Southern Nova Scotia doing here? Okay, Tom, Tom, cut it out. Mark Babu. What's wrong with you? Where's your imagination? Why give up the bright lights and hide away in this sewer just because the cha-cha is extinct? Come oh. with me, my son. Hi. Do you mind if I sit down? I wish you would. I really do. I hate to admit that I'm the kind of absent-minded professor that gets so wrapped up in a project he forgets to eat. <laughs> well, you're with the right company, but the wrong restaurant. I'll teach you all the new dances, the, the surfer stomp, the turfer romp, the river pump. And circumstance? <laughs> yeah, well, and even under these circumstances, we'll stomp, romp, and pop our way back to the top again. Yeah, well, stomp, romp, pop with that funny man. You want to get me fired? <laughs> Night Owl Hoffman are muscle bound. Uh, <laughs> uh, psychologist. <laughs> Hi, Professor Collins. Just the man I've been looking for. I have a profound question to ask, loaded with psychological significance. I have one for you, too. Fire away. Where can two hungry people find a place that serves something besides chili at this time of night? Now, before you answer, Mr. DeWitt, think. I don't have to. The new townhouse over in Parkersburg. Open until 10 o'clock, and they actually know what Bula Base is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the place uh, Helen and Ed said uh, had so much atmosphere. Right. Once inside, you can almost imagine you're in Chicago or New York or some other civilized outpost. <laughs> <laughs> Safe from the chili eaters. Well, I'm sold. How about you? Well... Congratulations. You have both become members in good standing of the DeWitt Free Spirit, Nonconformist and Anti... <laughs> Darn you, Tom Tom. You ought to be locked up as a public menace. I'll pay for it, Goldilocks. There isn't any more hot chocolate. Well, there's always the chili. <laughs> hey. See you, Tom. Thanks for the tip. How about that? What? Those two clowns. Take my idea and run out of me. You sure you're invited? Well, not exactly, but <laughs> I thought uh, Irene was Macaulay's girl. Answer? three times in the price and not a nibble. <laughs> so, a little DeWitmanship. <laughs> well, good luck. Hey, how was the big dinner the other night in Parkersburg? Wonderful. We went back there again last night. Oh, uh, try the stroganoff? Listen, I'll tell you about it later. I have to go over to Whalen Hall for Professor Collins. I have his car keys and he can't get home until I leave. I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
course, it's none of my business. <laughs> Hey, Macaulay, I know you're probably late for football. Well, you do it, I got other things on my mind. Oh, no. This is a heck of a lot more important. They'll just have to kick each other around without you for a while. They just might have to. What's this? I blew my B average right out the window. I was too bushed. What did that do to that? <laughs> that 24 karat scholarship. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> great. Nothing wrong with the C average. I've been maintaining one for years. <laughs> Besides, you'll be able to get it back up there again, especially now that it's goodbye football and hello, Irene. Why don't you go tell her? She's up in Collins' office right now. As usual. <laughs> Listen, jerk, don't be so happy to kiss that scholarship goodbye. I've worked myself stupid, and a lot of guys are counting on me. Who's counting on you? Who are you doing this for? The college? The coach? The team? I just don't want to let anybody down. Coach said maybe I could take some makeup tests. Oh, yeah? Well, when you finish there, why don't you see if you can arrange a makeup test with Irene? If she still remembers you. Wake up, meathead! You want it in stereo? Irene is dating another guy, and you don't even know it. Professor Collins. <laughs> Available Collins. A guy that's got just about everything you don't and won't for years. Maybe never. You want to know something? I hope she marries him because you deserve it, buddy. All right, that's enough! Think the memories of a few cheers will keep her happy while she waits for you to grow up? Not when there's a guy like Collins around. Figure the odds for yourself, Wes. A worn-out football player or a... Sharp-looking college professor with a classy convertible. And single, Wesley, single. She's up there right now with him. And you can bet your shoulder pads he doesn't need any spring training. All student lockers must be kept locked. We're not in use. They'll steal you blind around here. Basketball, Wes, if you don't have time for football. Yeah, yeah but basketball isn't as rugged as football. Look, Howard, if there's going to be a big college athlete in the Macaulay family, it's going to have to be you. Yeah, but still, yeah. And the sooner you start in training, the better. Now, how about hitting the sack? Yeah, okay. Well, sir, it's going to save me four cents. What? That letter I wrote to my folks about you playing football. Well, I hadn't mailed it yet, so now I don't have to waste the time of writing a whole new letter or a four-cent stamp or anything. I'll just say, P.S., forget all that stuff I told you about what Wiff was doing, because he didn't. I thought you were going to hit the sack. Yeah. Well, what I meant, I... Well, like they say, better to have loved than lost than never to have loved at all. I mean, better to have played some football than never to have played any. I know what you mean, Vern. Uh, I'm just trying to do like Tom Tom does when he sees you down in the mouth. Yeah, you're just trying to cheer me up. I'll see you later, Vern. Well, I wasn't trying to be smart out here or anything. Because.
know Professor Collins. Well, I guess summer's finally here. Sun's down, been down a couple of hours, and I don't believe the temperature's dropped a degree. Want me to fill her up? Uh, yeah, certainly, sure. You want to check my oil? I, I think I'm a quart low. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I change the station? I'll go right ahead. Sir, twenty weight. Right. Uh, uh, do you change for quarter? I want a couple of root beers. Last minute doubts. No. It'll be three bucks even, sir. Give them to Hedvig. What? Ever read Peer Gint? Gibson? No, I've never read any of his stuff. It's all about a guy who spent his whole life looking for something and finding out what he should have known when he was 18. That the only thing in life worth having was the woman that loved him. Oh? I guess it's something we... we all need. Thanks. I've got to close up. Well, I can see my cleaning bill going up again. How come? Well, I just found another spot on my dress. I'm not complaining. In fact, I'm really kind of acquiring a taste for this sort of thing. Smell of burnt rubber and gasoline and... I've missed it. I kicked myself off the team. What did you say? 
Well, my gray started going down, and... I told the coach I couldn't cut it. I couldn't cut it either. Professor Collins, I mean. I kicked myself off the team, too. When I was a, a freshman, before we started going together, Dodie Pearson and I worked like the Dickens just to get into his class. It was all filled up, as usual. I had some silly kind of crush on him. Isn't that ridiculous? I, I guess I just transferred all my affection for... from Gregory Peck to Professor Collins. And tonight, sitting across the table from him, I... He, he didn't seem like Professor Collins anymore. He, he seemed like, well, he seemed like Gregory Peck. And, and I started giggling like a fool. It was a terrible thing to do to a man who, who was really trying to tell me that he cared for me. It was like Gregory Peck making love to Alma Jean Dobson. Here I was listening to all the things that I ever wanted to hear from a man. Only it was the wrong man. It just wasn't you. When a guy's got something as valuable as you, he's got to take darn good care of it or... What did you say? All I said was if we failed so well apart, we're bound to... I love you. What? I said if I'm going to fail with any man on this earth, I want it to be you, darling. <laughs> 